welcome back to the Mama Knows Not a Podcast. I'm your host, Brianna, and we have our friend Lenora back with us today. But in this capacity, she's going to tell us about her business, BTD Horizons, and her work as a holographic memory practitioner blah, and coach. So can we just figure out what that actually means, Lenora? Can you tell us <laughs> what the heck is holographic memory resolution? <laughs> Absolutely. So holographic <laughs> memory resolution is actually a healing technique. It's an energetic reframing of emotional events, and it mm. is incredibly powerful. I actually went through a very difficult time period myself. So this was one of the tools and techniques that people had guided me through. And I found it so profoundly powerful that it was just a very clear indication. Hey, you need to, you need to add this to your repertoire and you need to train yourself properly on this because it was just that powerful. And so what does this practice utilize in order to support, help, treat people? That's a great question. So this practice actually is when we have, we have a mind and a body and our culture would love to make you think that this is totally separate and that there's really not that connection, but you are connected. You are mm -hmm. one unit. So when you have an experience, you actually record it in your mind and then it gets stored in your body when you have these very intense experiences, such as what people might refer to as a traumatic experience mm. or a really bad memory of some sort. And things get coded into our body because we are designed that way. And when trauma events happen, and our culture would also have you think trauma as in PTSD or somebody in a mm. war zone, but trauma really is when your nervous system is overwhelmed. And your nervous system goes into this whole process where it captures all of this information, the sound, the event, the feeling, and everything tied to that event. And it stores it in your body until you're ready to work with it. So for example, if you have a memory that comes up and then you get a feeling in your body mm -hmm. or another, it, it triggers you. You hear a lot about being triggered. Mm -hmm. It's because there's intensity stored in your body and that intensity needs to properly be processed. If you'd ever seen Ghostbusters, yeah. you remember Ghostbusters? Oh, yeah. So th that's a lot like a traumatic experience. It gets trapped in this ghost box, and then it gets ah. stored in your storage facility until it is able to be properly cleaned and released. And with holographic memory resolution, we are actually able to safely clear that memory from the body. And what it is, it's stored energy and it's stored pain. And we're able to clear it from the body using this technique. It's an emotional reframing technique. And it is incredibly powerful. It's so wildly helpful. And who would be a candidate for this kind of process or treatment? I don't know what it's called. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> treatment it's, process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. So we, I've worked with a variety of people from people that are having sleep difficulties to people that have experienced a stroke and mm. are having difficulty processing that event and things are coming up from that event. I've used this on traumatic brain injury patients. Mm. I've used this on eating disorders. It's because the nervous system has trapped information and it simply needs to be vented and cleared properly. From my own personal experience, I suffered with a eating disorder for more than a decade. Mm. And I had habits that were less than helpful in my experience. You could That's imagine it started to pick up more speed over the years. And I would get a feeling that mm -hmm. said I had to do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. and, and when people would say, how do you know? They, my coaches would ask me, how do you know it's time to do this? I'm like, it's, I feel it. And they're like, great. Where do you feel it in your body? How do you know? Because we are constantly running programs. Mm. When we're doing habits such as whether it's binge eating, whether it's binge eating and then exercising, whether it's spitting mm -hmm. food, whatever the case is, your body's going into a protective mode, whether it's cutting, whatever the case may be, your body is doing what it needs to do. And I often said, like, I felt broken. And they would say, you're not broken. You're just operating perfectly fine. It's the program that's not helpful. So if you can think of it as a program with it, with HMR, holographic memory resolution, 
It's running a new program. It's releasing this one that's stored in your body Mm -hmm. and allowing it to go out to where it needs to be to be cleared so that new software can come into your body and it can have an update and you can actually function. And where I was in my life, I was at a very stuck point and I was doing my best to help myself Mm -hmm. get out of this very painful situation. And I wouldn't turn to my friends because I had a bright smile on. People knew me as a bright person that I didn't have any problems. And I certainly was not going to tell my family about it because that just was not an option. Mm -hmm. And I could not check out of my life. So I was trying to help myself with um, a variety of programs. I've I've used emotional freedom technique. I would use meditation. I would use a number of things. But it wasn't until I finally surrendered to the fact that I took myself as far as I could. Mm -hmm. And I could not go it alone anymore. There were things that I didn't know that other people knew. And that was okay. How were they able to help me? And so I reached out to coaches and along the way found my own path. And I realized that I needed more help when I was getting my second false tooth drilled into my head because the habits that I was stuck in were that damaging Mm. to my body. And that's not just what was happening to your teeth. Yes. So you're talking about programming and all I could think was system malfunction, system malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful way to say it. Beautiful way of saying it. Um, well, I have like a bazillion questions too. Yeah. Because that, well, I, I think this that's a really important um, kind of topic to even discuss in general is like eating disorders. I do. I had anorexia when I was a teenager, you know, that was triggered from, um, parental divorce, my mom Mm -hmm. remarrying and, um, physical and emotional abuse. And so you just kind of like, you're, it's interesting how you like your, your body like goes into self-protective mode. And Mm -hmm. I don't know about for you, but it was like the one thing in my life that I could control was Mm -hmm. what I ate, when I ate, how I ate, when, when I worked out, how I worked out. And you didn't, I didn't realize it at, you know, 14, what I was doing and why, um, Mm -hmm. Totally in retrospect, but then you parlay that into like, you know, cat. I mean, I, I was able to get myself out of it, which I think was really kind of pat, pat on the back for me, but amazing. Um, but I definitely also went to truly. therapy and stuff too. So yeah. it's not, not all, not just me, but truly but it, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It, it is it's super hard. Um, but it's, it, it is interesting. Like what, trauma and distress like do to you in general mm-hmm. uh and then like i also think it's interesting like you're sitting here talking about trauma in the body um i did a podcast with um a girl named hillary and she was like adamant that you know trauma gets stored in, in your body and it's like one of the ways you can't you know if you can't lose weight or like whatever mm-hmm. it is like like postpartum and a lot of times Mm -hmm. women like either balloon up or they can't shed the pounds. And we were talking a lot about that. And it's kind of interesting because it's like, um, did you ever see frozen? I think it could be frozen too. And she's Mm -hmm. like, water has memory, you know? Oh yeah. And yeah. 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 Uh, And I kind of think of it. It's like that. It's like, you forget that like your, your innate responses, like even today, like my husband will ask something and I'll like freeze because of all like the, just, you know, yeah. you don't just shed 14, 15, 20 years of trauma. You just, just, oh, yeah. you got to work through it. Right. Absolutely. Um, and so you still have these like reactions and like mm-hmm. responses, even like as a, like nearly four year old, 40 year old woman. Like, mm-hmm. so that kind of leads me to this question. Um, how, like, how does the body actually store trauma? In it your stores it. So when we come into this world, We have no language, none. Mm, We don't know the difference between a spoon and a doorknob. We have nothing. We get language through our environment and it gets meaningful from that experience. So when sometimes people hear a specific word to one or a phrase to Mm -hmm. one person, it's no big deal. To another person, it's a huge deal. It's how they recorded the meaning. Mm. So our body actually experiences it and stores it in the form of what we did understand when we came into this world, colors, textures, Mm -hmm. shapes, temperatures. That was information we were able to pick up from our environment. So when I ask my clients, 
where do you feel this in your body? And they might say, I feel it in my neck. I'll say, okay, great. The inside, outside, or both. Is there a weight, texture, or temperature to it? Is there a color, a shape, a size? And what that is, is that's giving that conscious mind an icon. And you're starting to bridge the communication between the subconscious and the conscious. And that's a good thing because we are 5% conscious and 95 is just this lovely programs that we're all running. But when you can localize that icon, that is how the body has stored it. If you've ever seen the, the back of a CD, do you remember when we used to record CDs? Yep. <laughs> exactly. So there's so much information <laughs> on that CD that you don't actually know, mm-hmm. but there's a color to it. There's, there's a code to it. Your body is the exact same way. There's a code. Your body knows how it's stored. And as we do, especially with holographic memory resolution and the other techniques that I use, I'm also a certified hypnotist. And as I use those techniques, what we're doing is we're connecting the conscious and the subconscious. We're actually then saying, conscious, do me a favor, sit down, have a nice cup of tea. And the subconscious can actually come out and say, this is the memory. This is how I stored it. This is where it is in my body. This is what it means to me. And depending on how the intensity is for that person, that's how it gets coded. Sometimes it's an intensity of Mm -hmm. just kind of annoying, really, you know, I have a pit in my stomach. Other times when we, when we tap into something, it could be extremely painful and the individual is crying and it's completely normal because that is a release of energy that Mm. needs to happen. Now, releases of energy can happen in the form of burps. They can happen in the form of coughs. They can happen in the form of sneezes in excessive laughing in nothing at all, or even crying. It's just how that person releases stuff. And the fact that it's releasing from the body, if you think about a pot, a steam pot, you have to let the steam out. Mm -hmm. When we use HMR or hypnosis, what we're actually doing is not only are we cleaning the pot in a, in a very deep sense, Mm -hmm. we've now taken it off the stove. We've cleared away the burnt stuff that was on this pot that made it not very useful. Mm -hmm. We soaked it. We cleared it. We cleaned it up and we restored it. When you're doing that, especially when it comes to the approaches that I do, non-disclosure therapy, I work with a number of men and it might be on performance issues that they're having, those difficulties Mm. or not wanting to be vulnerable. They don't have to tell me anything. As long as they can follow simple, clear instructions, where do you feel it? Or what is the weight to it? Or Mm -hmm. can you move this through that? As long as they can do that, they are in good shape and they actually have ownership to rewrite the program. And that's truly, truly empowering because when we think I've, it's my responsibility to clean up my inner work. It's my responsibility to clean up the things that are Mm -hmm. causing me pain. And it really is because we can have somebody in our life, but They might say, oh, you're beautiful. You mean so much to me. You're so more than enough. But if we don't feel it, that's that component. It's not on them. That's that inner part that we're working to clear as we're humans and as we're having this very wonderful emotional intelligence awakening. It's also really painful. Mm -hmm. But when we can actually get somebody through that, it's a completely different world. And these things that were holding them back, whether they were holding them back from intimacy or holding them back from enjoying food or having these disruptive things that are coming up in their everyday life, they can actually function Mm -hmm. and then they can feel even better. And they're feeling more than enough. They're feeling satisfied. They're feeling alive. They're making more money. If that was important to them, they're living the relationships that they want. And that's where that inner work happens. And that's how we thrive and we come out of the survival mode. Interesting. And when, because you brought it up, I want to talk a little bit about like hypnosis and how that, Mm -hmm. before I dig too much deeper Mm -hmm. into some other things, how does hypnosis work and support people on a healing journey? Absolutely. So hypnosis is an amazing tool. And my understanding was also much like the culture's understanding of there's somebody up on stage and they're going to cluck like a chicken and they're going to have no recollection of it. But truly we are naturally in states of trance all day long. And we are (laughs) naturally able to move in and out of these states of trance. 
Hypnosis is simply a narrow state of trance is a narrowing of focus. So have you ever watched a movie? Mm-hmm. You walk into the movie, you sit down, you got your popcorn, you're all settled, the lights go down. And at any point, you could tell me when you became completely absorbed in that movie, you were no longer absorbed in that movie. But when you're absorbed in something, you have this narrowing of focus. Mm -hmm. That's a state of trance. When we're having conversations, or if you're driving down the highway and you suddenly miss your exit, all natural states of trance. So when it comes to hypnosis, the work that I do, my clients, they'll simply be focused on what they're telling me Mm. and guiding them to go back and forth. And they're able to converse. Some like to keep their eyes open. Some like to keep their eyes closed but they're focused on what they're clearing. They're focused on what they're experiencing. So if they're telling me about a disagreement that they had, they're simply having this back and forth conversation that is working to clear what it means, such as Mm. they might not feel enough. They might not feel heard. They might not feel understood. Or this person said something very hurtful. Mm. Or if they have a really harsh, critical inner voice, Changing these filters helps us actually thrive because when we don't have this critical voice blaring in our ear all the time, wow, the things that we can actually function and do. And it makes a huge difference in how we physically, emotionally, spiritually feel as we move throughout the day. Ooh, ah. And (laughs) now, how do you use HMR or holographic memory resolution and hypnosis. Can you use them in tandem for oh, yeah. treatment? Absolutely. So I use a combination. I, li- I like to call it a hybrid. So there is a coaching component, which people would consider coaching as in conversational, strategizing, moving toward the next part. But there's also this conversation, this deep conversation of when people come and work with me. And, or if you're working with a coach of some, you have some sort, this is ideally how it should go. This is how it goes with me. When my clients say, I'm having trouble with X, Y, and Z, I'm having mm-hmm. trouble sleeping, I'm having trouble in my relationships, I'm always attracting the wrong man, or I have difficulty with food. What they're showing me are the difficulties that they're having. They are not the difficulty. Mm-hmm. It's not you are the problem. It is, here's a problem. Can we navigate this together? And that is how I like to approach things. And I find that to be very, very important because there's no shame. There's Mm. no guilt. There's no judgment when I'm working with my clients. That's not A, who I am. And B, that's not my style. And nobody would come to work with that. And that would be a terrible, (laughs) terrible service to provide. But what I love to do is to help people solve their problems that they're experiencing and that they're out in front, that it's a safe container that Mm -hmm. I work with. It's not that I'm broadcasting it on Facebook or that they're going to be ridiculed later for it, of which sometimes can happen when you confide in friends. And when Mm -hmm. you confide in family, you're getting ridiculed or you're getting it thrown back in your face. When somebody came to you with something that was very personal and very painful for them, that vulnerability, when my clients are there, that's what's most important is that they feel like they can express themselves and that they also feel supported So when I'm working with them, I'm using coaching. I might be using hypnosis and I might be using HMR. It just depends on the individual. And at all times, I always tell them they are safe. And so am I. I can't hurt them and they cannot hurt me. And nothing that they don't want can occur. Mm. That is something truly important because that allows them to understand they have autonomy. Mm. I'm not going to do anything that they don't want to do. And they also understand that they have the right and the choice to choose to come here and work on something or not to. And that's really profound to remind them of. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point. You know, it, everything is choice. Mm-hmm. Whew, I guess starting that with my kid young. Now, I don't know if there's an answer to this, but I feel like I need to ask it. Are there any like symptoms or behaviors that people tend to exert um, who that who might be experiencing trauma or, you know, is there like any classic symptoms, I guess, that show like a person that might be a good candidate for this therapy? For me, it's, it's anything, something is for me. It's if it's important to that person, Hmm. how it appears to that person is entirely personal Mm -hmm. and it's entirely personalized. 
So when somebody has a bright smile face, happy face on, you might have no idea that they're awake at 2 a.m., that they're Mm -hmm. panicked in a closet sometimes, that they're having these sabotaging behaviors where they will be wanting to carefully take care of their nutrition for three days and then suddenly in a sleeve of Oreos and raw cookie dough and they don't understand why Mm. their system is in panic mode. And that's okay. A lot of the time, and I would have never, I did not know how bad it was and how difficult of a time I was having and that it would be considered an, an, a food a food addiction of sorts. I didn't realize that. You don't realize mm. it when you're in it because you've now moved a little bit more. You've moved a little bit more and you've been okay in mm-hmm. this down spiral of pain. And you have no idea how bad it is until you get over whatever it is or you get around it and you look behind you and you go, oh my God, I had no idea it was that bad. Mm. But thank God I got the help that I was able to. Some people are cutting, some people are crying, some people are just not able to remember their childhood at all. Mm -hmm. Or they don't want to have an intimate relationship with their significant other and they don't understand why. Because logic tells them, this person loves me. I should Mm -hmm. want to, I should want to be in a relationship with them, in an intimate relationship with them. But every time they touch me, I'm cringing and I don't know why. These other things that are going on, and especially when it comes to sexual abuse, a number of mm. greater population, which is hor- horrible, have experienced some sort of abuse. Mm-hmm. And that can really impact how you intimately connect with somebody. Mm-hmm. If you don't want your body touched, that's a that's heartbreaking to feel. It's heartbreaking mm-hmm. on the relationship also, but there are solutions. There are ways to be supported Mm -hmm. through that. Dang. And then I don't know if there's an answer to this one either, but is (laughs) there, can there be like any tells as to where people like store their trauma in their body? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ever ever hear the phrase, you're a pain in my neck. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Pain in the butt. I get that pit in my stomach. Yeah. I get the feeling again. Oh Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you listen to people's language, they will often tell you exactly where they feel it. And if not, I just want to get over this. I don't know how to get over this. Mm. They're showing you physically right in front of them. And they're also showing you, I don't know if you can see my hands, how <laughs> big it is. Yeah. Those are all indicators that something else is going on and I can't get around this. This is so hard. I'm just stuck. I, I've been stuck at this wall for ages. I just hit a mm. wall. They're telling you exactly how they coded it. And the only difference is that we weren't taught to navigate this. These are thankfully, thankfully that these are tools and technologies that we now have Mm. that have helped people move beyond and understand, Hey, something's holding me back, but it doesn't have to be here my entire life. There was once a point where I just kind of thought I was going to have this massive issue in my life till the end of time. (laughs) And that was very, very difficult to, to think. And I would imagine myself on my, on my deathbed, is this how I want to look back on my, Mm. how many years of life thinking I had this problem? And that was, it was heartbreaking to, to think that not only could that happen to me, that it has likely happened to other people because I know I'm not alone. Absolutely. That's a really good point too. How can HMR, I'm going to use the acronym now and Mm -hmm. hypnosis, like, so say you're someone like me Mm -hmm. and spoiler people, I did do a one-on-one session with Mm -hmm. um, Lenora to get an idea of what she does for her work. So as somebody who's had like traumatic experiences and, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe someone who's trying to like break generational cycles, Mm -hmm. let me tell you what abuse and a million other things run in my family. How can these therapies be a support? You're acknowledging it when you come to somebody and you're saying, I don't want to keep this covered. And I would always encourage people, if you try one coach or you work with another clinician, Mm -hmm. you work with a therapist and it's not a good fit, that's okay. Keep looking for something that's right for you. Mm -hmm. Don't stop at one. If you tried it, 
talk therapy and it didn't work or you don't want to try medication and and that's that's absolutely right keep searching for solutions that might work for you because it's Mm -hmm. truly 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 important and for for people that reach out to me it's often because they have are experiencing an eating disorder they're experiencing some sort of past memory of sexual abuse they're trying to Mm. navigate a relationship those are the reasons that people often reach out to me. And truly, I use this work all day with so many people because it's not just used for pain. It's not just used mm. for trauma. It's also used to help you get to where you want to go. I actually had a client. She was an opera singer. And she would tell me, once I get on stage, I can't perform. I can't have that. I can't hit that pocket. And she wanted to be in the sweet spot. And so Mm. what I did with her was help her release that from her body. And it wasn't necessarily painful where she was crying. It was just something that was holding her back. She could feel something stuck in her throat when she would get on stage. Mm. And that is absolutely a mind body connection for sure. So what I did was I walked her through a process and a couple of weeks later, she go, she called me up and she was telling me about her performance. And it was just the loveliest message that you could ever want to hear from somebody. And they're all, these techniques are also used for good and they're always used for good, but mm. it doesn't necessarily have to be painful. It could be anything and any, everything that's important to an individual. Mm. So I know this is very subjective, but what could somebody notice after a treatment or a session, like what could be different in their life or immediately? Completely. How they feel. They'll notice often a lighterness. They'll notice a calmness. They'll notice that these also get better and better. So for example, Mm -hmm. one of my clients had mentioned that she wanted to have a voice. She wanted to talk slower Mm -hmm. and she would talk really quickly. And so I was walking her through one of the processes. And when I checked back in with her, I said, how are you doing? And she goes, I talk so much slower at work. And it's because we bypass this 5% conscious and we Mm. work with the subconscious. We work where it's rooted. We go back to the cause. And that's truly important because that wants resolution. And that's what we're providing. We're providing resolve, dissolve, and so solutions for that part. That's just having a bit of difficulty. We're clearing out the old program. We're updating a new program. And that's a great thing. What would you say to somebody who might have like, you know, suspicions or say that this sounds a little too, you know, woo woo for them? What would you say to that? I know that, that's so funny. Um, Cause I, that's a, definitely something that I've encountered before. And I would honestly say, if it's not for you, it's for you. And if it is for you, try it. Then what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to talk to somebody. (laughs) I was just wondering, you know, um, I remember I started acupuncture and stuff and I was like, people are like, what are you doing that for? I'm like, well, it's been around for centuries. There's gotta be a, there's gotta be a point to it. (laughs) HMR is actually coming out in clinical study trials or the clinical study trials are completed for it. So now the information is actually coming out. So they're starting to integrate it into Western medicine, just like Mm -hmm. acupuncture. How about that? Amazing. Uh-huh. What are the what are the differences between HMR and hyp- hypnosis? They're quite similar. Okay. Truly. At their core, they're quite similar. Um, specifically, HMR was developed as a memory-based technique for emotional reframing of an event. Okay. Have you ever heard of um, EDMR? Yeah. Okay. So that one's more with eye movements to recalibrate okay. an event. When it comes to HMR, we're finding massive, massive shifts in shorter amount of time, which is a great thing. That being said, if EDMR is right for somebody, great. If talk therapy is right for somebody, phenomenal. If breath breath therapy is right for somebody, absolutely. And I truly encourage people to create a toolbox. Mm. HMR, hypnosis, breathing, these are the things that worked for me. It might sound therapy might work for somebody else along with HMR or along with something else. Right. Completely. That's a great thing is that this is another tool in the toolbox. And it's one that I happen to be incredibly passionate about because of the massive 
benefit that I got and the desire to help people in this way. So as you already know, I have another career as a speech pathologist. <laughs> I had another career as a baker. And this ha had, those are what I like to consider bridges that got me to this point mm. because the drive, the passion, the desire to help people and to be of service in this way is so internal. And it's mm. such a massive feeling that I have coming through my body that this is what I, this is now all I do. This, this is the work that I do now. And Absolutely. it's incredibly powerful and incredibly humbling to be able to help people in this way. So when it comes to parenting, obviously this is a parenting focused <laughs> podcast. How can these modalities um, help parents? That's a phenomenal question, especially because as parents, we're often feeling stressed and that we mm -hmm. can't keep up or that anything yeah. we do, especially when we have grandparents looking at us or we have our friends looking at us. Oh, yeah. And nothing I do is enough. I'm, it's never good enough or a spouse looking at us. These are internal feelings that haven't been quite resolved. And it's mm -hmm. important for us to work through that, whether it's through it, under it, over it, doesn't matter. It's important for us to acknowledge it so that we don't transfer that energy to our child. Mm -hmm. Also, if you, one of my clients had um, very sincerely shared with me that they had a temper and that they found that they were going zero to 60 really quickly, but that's not the person they wanted to show up as parenting. So mm -hmm. I walked them through, a, I ran them through, I walked them through a number of processes and immediately they felt the shift. And then even the next week, they shared with me that they felt so different and they even noticed it. Not only did mm. they notice it, their spouse noticed it so that they can quite literally have an interaction with their child where if the child does need some firm voice mm -hmm. of some sort of which the child tends to might possibly happen every now and again. Oh yeah. But they're not responding in the way that they were raised in. Mm -hmm. If you were raised in an environment where there was a lot of screaming, or if you were raised in an environment where there, you never felt like you were good enough, that information that you grew up around shaped you as a person and to support parents, we want them to feel like they're doing their best. We <laughs> want them to feel supported. We want them to feel more than enough so that they can actually take care of themselves, but mm. then take care of their child and take care of their families, however it may be, whether it's a family of one or a family of 25, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but <laughs> that's Oof. the intention because when we are able to be more in ourselves, when we are able to show up for ourselves and take care of ourselves and to feel worthy and to feel good enough and to feel mm. deserving, we respond completely differently. We're kinder, we're happier, we're brighter. Mm -hmm. And that ripples not only through us, through our families and then through the world. And it's truly an emotional intelligence leveling up or a higher vibration mm -hmm. living. Well, like that higher vibration living. Mm -hmm. If people are interested in learning more about a holographic memory resolution, HMR or hypnosis, where would you direct them? They're welcome to visit my website. All of your fabulous listeners, <laughs> simply share with me that Mama Knows Not a podcast <laughs> and everyone gets a complimentary consultation. What? what? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Look at that. But Look at that fun little curveball. Who knew? Who saw that coming? Um, me. <laughs> so, <laughs> simply visit dtbhorizons.com and you can follow me on social media. But if you also still want to learn more, um, the, my, my teacher was on healing, his website's healingdimensions.com and you mm. can just look it up on YouTube and there's a ton of information out there and it's truly, truly wonderful. Is there I'm anything? a big fan in case you couldn't <laughs> tell. Is there anything else we need to know about HMR, hypnosis, how it can help us, support us? Do we and miss anything? If you have questions, by all means, reach out to me. I will happily answer as many questions as I possibly can. Wow. Okay, cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm just making sure I'm like, I think I asked enough questions, but you never know. <laughs> Well, I hope y'all learned something today because I did. I'm the mom who knows nada. My name is Brianna. This is Lenora Edwards of DTB Horizons, holographic memory 
practitioner, coach. You can find her at dtbhorizons.com. And until next time, I hope y'all are learning something you didn't know you needed to know. Mm -hmm. It's like, where there's the button.